In the end of time, there was a man who knew the road, and the writing was written on the stone. In the ancient time, an artist led the way, but no one seemed to understand. Son of a bitch! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, that felt unnecessary. Howdy there, folks, and welcome to the critically acclaimed Penalty Box Sports Show. I'm the host of this ride, Boomer Sabata, with the dudes, Ryan the Bohemian Chameleon Sabata, and Chief PhD at Deontay Horn. Now, that's a pretty cool nickname, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not, I don't feel like I'm enough Bohemian to, to warn But that. you are. I'm not Elizabeth Warren. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh. Okay. I don't know who that is. I, was, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> it's, but it's queen, and chameleons are pretty cool. I guess we're on the right track. <laughs> All right, and uh, you guys ready to have yourself a little bit of a sports powwow? Huh? Yeah. Yeah? Got plenty of caffeine in us. We're ready to rock and roll. It's time for Shock or Not. All right. Number one for Shocker Knob, Bryce Harper finally signing with the Phillies to a 13-year, $330 million contract with no opt-out and no trade clause. Shocker Knob. Yes. Yeah, I've got it as a shock, too. Um, you look at, I mean, 13 years, $330 million, that's just north of $25 million a year. So that's not nearly the um, annual average salary that we thought. He was going to get. We thought he would top Bachado. Certainly thought yeah. he'd top like David Price and possibly Zach Greinke. But he took a little bit less. Got got more years. Uh, there were other teams offering more money, but less years. He wanted to, at least from what he said, he wanted to be in Philadelphia. And with the the no opt outs, also kind of shocks me. Yeah, that's uh, that's what surprises me the most is the no opt out. You think? I mean, even if you do plan on staying there all thirteen years, you. would you think you'd give yourself an out after like five in the event, you know, they, he wants to get Mike Trout. So that's, that's probably the long-term plan. Kind of like LeBron in LA is it's not a finished product. It's just, it's just the beginning. So they've got their eye on, on Trout in two years. If that doesn't happen though, you'd think Bryce would allow himself to, to get out if it's a dumpster fire, but he's sticking to his guns, full, no trade clause, no opt out. Less money per year. Looks like he he wants to be in Philly. What was it with the Dodgers? Like he was going to get forty plus million a year with the Dodgers, but it would have been short term. Yeah, and he didn't take that. No, he so he wanted the security. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of surprising, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't see that. Thirteen, thirteen years is. I think any anything over six in any sport is. I think now it's ridiculous. With, I mean, yeah, it, it's a little ridiculous, but given it's Bryce Harper, the the contract itself doesn't really surprise me. It it is the no opt out, no trade clause. Well, he, he is with the Phillies for thirteen years. Well, he could always waive the no trade clause if well, if I mean, he so choose so it, chose to. The idea is not that he will though. The idea is that's there to to protect himself against the Phillies pulling a a Raptors or a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but in in the event of say that he did become really disgruntled. Him waving the no trade clause and then requesting a trade would be his only way out. But then again, the uh, yeah, Phillies could use that against him and be like, "Who's taking that contract on?" Uh, the Dodgers. I mean, that's that's years away. But I mean, the Dodgers, yeah. maybe the Red Sox, they might have the money. The Yankees might have the money by then. So you but never know. Philadelphia can't can't be a winning team. Then you know that diminishes the value of Bryce Harper, who would want to take on twenty five plus million a year for a player who. I mean, he can't make the playoffs. I mean, that's that's obviously down the road, but yeah, it's just a weird contract. That's true. Right. Oh, and I didn't see a fun fact that said when his contract is up, the Mets will only owe Bonnie, Bobby, Bobby, Vanilla <laughs> three more payments of yeah. one point nine million every <laughs> smartest every deal year. Of the history. It's Bobby Bonilla Day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a wise contract. I, I wrapped that up. I don't know why they just didn't pay the rest of it out front. Well, you know what? Just try and buy him out. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, he's, he's taking yearly paychecks. 
All right. Well, uh, what about uh, Dallas Keuchel not get, getting a contract just yet? Who? The pitcher for the Astros. That's uh, more of a Ryan question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> There's still a lot of names out there who haven't signed. Um, they'll sign. We're, we're just now getting into spring training, so it, it'll happen. All right. Number two for Shocker Nah, the L.A. Lakers continuing to fall back in the West. Nope. I got it. Shock. I mean, you can't say it's not a shock. It's LeBron James. He's been in the finals eight straight times, let alone the playoffs. Well, yeah, he's had a bunch of mechanics and garbage men standing in his way every year. So <laughs> it's not a shock that he's going to the West and finally getting beat up on. But do you think this is LeBron's fault? No, it's not LeBron's fault. He, he missed, what, 19 games at one point? Yeah. And they were the fourth seed before that injury, and then when he gets back there... At yeah. the ninth seed? No, it's not It's not LeBron's okay. fault, but it's not shocking at this point you, with the chemistry issues. Do you issues. think that this started when Anthony Davis was rumored to be going to L.A. at the deadline? I think it started when Lonzo Ball got hurt. You think so? Yeah, you look at the defense over the last 10 games. They've allowed 121 points a game. They're only shooting 35% from three, um, and they're shooting less than 70% from the free throw line while allowing, uh, let's see, 33, they're allowing 33% from three, but they're also turning the ball over a lot. Just not, not a recipe for success. And, I mean, that's with LeBron on the floor. So that is partially his responsibility. I think at this point it, should, it sucks for the Lakers because the, the core of that team outside of LeBron is up for trade. And if they can't win as a core with LeBron on the, on the court, why would the Pelicans want them want to build around so it's, I think at this point it's just hurting their, they're not necessarily their chances at getting Davis, but it's, it's going to increase the price because yeah. Lonzo and Ingram and Kuzma just can't get it done. They won't with be, LeBron on the court. They won't be able to compete if the rumors about the Celtics saying everybody's on the table is true. Because I'd much rather have Smart Brown Tatum as opposed to Ingram Kuzma and Lonzo. So yeah. I mean, all the Celtics got to do is say here. They could just say here's Tatum. They could say here's Tatum. <laughs> Yeah, and they got the Lakers beat because Tatum it's would would easily be the second best player on the Lakers outside of LeBron if he went there. So, yeah, at this point they're gonna have to hope no one trades for him and he just hits the open market at the end of next year. Other yeah. than that, I think they have little to no shot, and they'd be better off going for a Kyrie LeBron reunion, possibly get Kawhi. Yeah, maybe. But Kawhi might want to stay in Toronto. Yeah, Kawhi, I think it might be a Paul yeah. George situation where he doesn't want to leave because yeah. look at them. Yeah, he likes it in Toronto. Yeah, I think Kawhi. Oh, he would love Toronto. Toronto. Toronto seems like an awesome place. Yeah. They embraced him. They embraced Kawhi, which is good. He and he's it. a fun guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, number three for Shocker Non, number six, Michigan State, number eight, Houston, and number 10, Marquette, all losing to unranked teams last weekend. Shocker Non. No. No. Out of all of them, Michigan State is the most surprising, but it's, eh. I thought Michigan State was overrated the entire I thought all three were overrated the entire year. Here's the thing about college basketball that makes it different from college football. You can lose a few games. It's okay. It's okay to lose a few games. But in college football, yeah, if top 10 team loses one game, done. And that's why college football is very flawed. And it's very... Like, Houston that, that's <laughs> why I have high blood pressure is because of college football. Houston was number eight heading number into eight. this. Yeah. They're six now. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it apparently didn't. Yeah, so I guess it, you can it definitely, it is scientifically proven you can lose a few in college basketball. Yeah, just look at KU. Well, um, well, no, the Houston's 12th in the AP, AP poll, but in the, in the NCAA men's basketball net rankings, they're sixth. Hmm. <laughs> well, I think the net rankings take in what evaluation of everything, all right. types of factors. All right. yeah, I'm sure, yeah. But, yeah, right. it's, it's, it's March. Teams are teams are going to lose. It's these games don't mean necessarily anything at this point. Conference championships start this week, right? So those matter. Yeah. You know, you know, you know why? Because I mean, I my f- my former school might be able to make a run at this thing. Which one? <laughs> but, uh, Butler, Wichita State. State. <laughs> Wichita State. They're getting hot at the right time. They oh won, God! They, they've won seven of nine. They get hot in the ACC or AAC. Here, and win a few on. games in a row, they'll be in the tournament. Mm, I'm going to look for them. Here. I don't know. They have in this poll. What's their record? Every team. Oh, the record's not good. That's what I'm saying. They got to make a run in the AAC, or they're not making it. Oh, you's um, making it. They're barely on the bubble for NIT. So Wichita State's one hope is to get on the hot, really hot run, 
and win the tournament tournament because they don't do that. You were at Wichita State for a cup of coffee. I was at Wichita <laughs> State for half a semester. <laughs> a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It was great. It was great. Learn from it at least. Oh, I learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot. So, Ryan, what numbers are, are you pulling up for Wichita State? I'm trying to find them in the poll. <laughs> I told you they're not in the poll. <laughs> no, they, this has every team. I forgot what conference they're. They ain't going to be the American any. Athletic. Oh, that's right. They moved. Okay, that's it. You was looking for the Valley. Yep. The uh, Valley. Loyola would be putting the smackdown on the boys now. <laughs> Wichita State is 90th at the moment, so they are outside of the. That's yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. They could make a run at this thing, which means they could potentially, possibly get hot and win the tournament. Well, I'm saying, will it happen? Doubtful with Cincinnati and Houston, and but you, you, but you never know. I've seen crazier things happen in conference tournaments. So <laughs> let's let's add another thing to shocker not <laughs> a, a bonus shocker not fact. Uh, Deontay Horn canceling his cable subscription before March Madness begins. <laughs> shocker yeah, that's definitely shock. <laughs> that's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> That's thirty dollars. I wasn't willing to commit. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get back on track with some with some sports facts. Number four for Shocker now, Calgary Flames still at the top of the Pacific Division. I've got that as a no. Um, Johnny Gaudreau's having an MVP type season. Elias Lindholm's over a point per game. Sean Monahan, who's been the captain of that team for years, he's also over a point per game. Uh, they're young studs. Matthew Thatchuk is is stepping up. Noah Hannafin playing some good defense. And they're getting good goalie uh, play from good old Mike Smith. Yeah. Mike Smith, <laughs> good old and, Mike Smith and David Riddich. They're both putting up less than three goals allowed per game. Uh, Riddich at 91% save percentage. So, no, it's not surprising. You'd, you figure that the rest of the, the rest of the division with I mean, San Jose's okay. Vegas struggled early in the year, so... No, it's not necessarily surprising. Pacific's not okay. that interesting. Deontay? Yeah, what he said sounds really right. correct. Yeah. I mean, I think it... San Jose is, what, second in the division? So it's not like that they're, they're that far back. I think that that's the most... I wouldn't say shocking, but is the fact that... Yeah, they are ahead of the Sharks, and the Sharks, you look at the beginning of the season, they were stacked. And, I mean, they still are, but they're not performing quite to the level that I think everybody expected. But, I mean, they're still in good shape. So, no worries. Good for Calgary. Calgary's a, a nice town. Nice town. Number five for Shocker Now. What individual numbers shocked you the most in this year's NFL Combine? Like 40-yard dashes and stuff like that. No, I think this one's pretty obvious. Very D obvious. DK Metcalf running a 4-3-3 I, I, at I, 225 I, freaking pounds. I had DK Metcalf's everything. He was impressive. No, that is three cone drill and not a shuttle drill. Nobody pays attention to that. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and what about a defensive lineman from Mississippi State? Montez yeah. Sweat. Montez Sweat. He was going. Oh, he was hauling it. Four point four one. Tyree Jackson, running a, I think it was like a high four seven or a low four eight. Quarterback out of Buffalo, six eight. That's pretty good. What about Rocky Sin? Rocky Sin. That's a great name. I like that. Uh, what about Justice Hill, Deontay? I like him. Do you think he should be a chief? And yeah, no. <laughs> He's not a three down back. All right. Unless he puts some meat on his bones. Well, we'll talk a little bit about the NFL draft coming up here in a little bit. Anything else stunning over the past week? Landon Collins not getting tagged. I'm not sure what the Giants' logic was behind that. You got a tag to use. Why not save and it for it, a... It was just revealed that the, at the trade deadline last year, there was a Huge deal for Landon Collins in place, and Giants didn't want to do it. Oh, my so, God. So, yeah, now, <laughs> now they didn't even tag him, so they're not going to get squat out of him. Uh, that is the most Giants move uh, Yeah, <laughs> my recent memory. Mine is the Ravens releasing Eric Weddle since he's been a mainstay in that defense. And yeah. also they're yes. in danger of losing Mosley and Suggs as well. Yeah. So the three guys who make that defense, that defense, are going to be gone. So. Right. It's mm -hmm. going to be time for Lamar to step up and put some points up because that defense will not be the same. Won't be the same. The Browns are just over there licking their chops, just like, all right. Like, all, all right. right. They're about all to right. <laughs> which, which two do we want? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a small, a small part of me just believes that the Steelers are going to come out and start annihilating everybody next year. Mm. Like, a small part of me is telling me that the Steelers are just going to nail the draft. <laughs> they're going to nail the draft, and they're going to come out and just whip everybody. Well, they, they do. Well, they, they, do they, they draft well? They replace receivers better than any team in the league. They do generally draft well, as long as they get their defense 
together. Not even their defense. Their secondary. Their front seven is great. Someone's telling me that the Steelers are going to surprise people <laughs> and just come out and start hitting teams in the mouth. Yeah, but they still have a decent offense. With I mean, Big Ben is still there. You have Juju. Is yeah, imagine DK. Number one. Imagine DK on the Steelers. James oh, Washington oh. is there, too. There's Connor. Yeah, yeah and James Connor still, I mean... People and yeah, and I think all those Steelers, I think all this stuff's been overblown. But, you know, we don't play them next year, so no worries. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Oklahoma Sooners dethroning the Kansas Jayhawks last night? Uh, that wasn't necessarily a shock because KU stinks this year. Um, I don't know why they were 13th going into that game. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. But um, it was a good win. It was uh, kind of unceremonious. You know, losing by double di- digits to end your streak. You know, streak's for, over. Streak's over. <laughs> for, a, for a team that was coming in, getting talked about with Duke and Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> they they falling harder than Humpty Dumpty, man. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the news that uh, Jason Witten, comeback of the century? Uh, no. no. He's got to have no ankles left. I mean, there, there, there has to be no cartilage in his legs anymore. Oh, no, that I'm, surprised me. It, su- it surprised me that the Cowboys were like, sure, we'll sign you. I'm glad he decided to come back because, good, we don't have to listen to him in the booth anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't very good. But, 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 Ryan, did that move kind of surprise you that the Cowboys are like, sure, we'll sign a 37-year-old tight end? No. What did I have to lose? They're, they don't have any other tight ends. They, they know Jason Witten has a great locker room presence. It's a playoff team. They're still really young. Dak hasn't gotten past his rookie contract, neither has Zeke. Amari Cooper... He's the veteran of that team, and he was drafted just like five years ago. So they they needed someone in that locker room to to kind of rally the troops, especially in a division that could be really good next year. Yeah, uh, Philadelphia, Carson Wentz can be healthy. Redskins, if they can land like Josh Rosen and Antonio Brown, that that'd be a pretty good offense. And, and the Giants, and the Giants, sweet Jesus, who knows? <laughs> sweet Jesus. So. <laughs> I mean, they could be good still. We don't even know. That yeah. offense is filthy good if they if they can put just, all the pieces together. <laughs> just do it right. So, yeah, it it makes sense. They they're gonna need that that leadership, especially when it starts to get cold. So, mm-hmm. no, it's not surprising. All right. Well, that was shocker now, ladies and gentlemen. Shocker now. All right, NFL talk. We talked a little bit about the Steelers, uh, but we're going to get a little bit more in-depth. Uh, lots of details are coming out about Antonio Brown's relationship with the Steelers this past year. Who was the problem in Pittsburgh, and will this affect Brown's free agency? Uh, I would say there wasn't a consistent leader in the locker room, probably. Uh, Mike Tomlin, head coach, usually supposed to be a good leader. Okay, I mean, he occasionally didn't seem like he had the players' backs. Didn't seem like he could solidify a locker room. Uh, especially during yeah. the tough losses, Big Ben not afraid to to be vocal about his criticism towards other players. Antonio Brown, same thing, had as an attitude on the field, uh, competitive, but I mean it's still still a little toxic. So I would say all those pieces together kind of contributed. Even the front office too didn't didn't seem like they had any control of what was going on on the field. So yeah, I'd just say. There's no one particular yeah. party at blame. Just no one stepped up yeah. and in, I think, the, in the crucial moments. And, and having that many big personalities, you had Antonio Brown, you had Big Ben, Mike Tomlin, and Le'Veon Bell. Not last season, but you know, building up to this crescendo. Um, I mean, it, you look at, at teams in NFL history that have that many big personalities. Usually, they have a big falling out. The one thing I can, the one example I can think of is the Cowboys in the '90s. When they it, when their dynasty ended, it ended quickly, and with a bang. So I think that it was kind of something similar to that. Um, but I don't think it will affect his free agency. Do you, Deontay? No. Well, uh, he's, he won't be a free agent. Or his uh, yeah. his trade value. I mean, yeah, that's what. I, yeah. Um, his uh, his luck at getting a new team. I think what it'll do is it'll send him to a team that he doesn't want to be on because no team who is a contender is going to want to throw a personality. That, personality like that in there you think about it the rams they wouldn't want to do anything like that yeah the chiefs you know andy Reid is a no-nonsense person he definitely wouldn't do anything like that um especially when antonio brown's going on lebron's show and going on interviews just calling out players espn liking tweets that point out past allegations against his quarterback 
you know, all that stuff shows immaturity and shows that he's not ready to move on. And like Colin Coward said, like, it's okay to be hurt over your ex after, like, one to two months. But four to five months later, if you're still talking about it, <laughs> they're, they're, you're still hurt and you're, yeah. you know... There's no reason to be talking about your ex four to five months after yeah. the breakup. Let it go. So cue the Daughtry. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, and so I think, I think for being 31, he's still pretty childish. With me, which I can't blame. I, mean, I know some 21 year olds like myself <laughs> who, who aren't the most mature either. But at this point, he has to let it go. Yeah, I think uh, the team, whatever team he's going to go to, they have to have a veteran quarterback, somebody who's just going to be like, yeah, whatever. Like an Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers isn't going to take that crap. Tom Brady definitely wouldn't. I'm not saying he would go to the Patriots, but a veteran quarterback like an Aaron Rodgers, he'd have to go to a team like that. Because a team that has a youngin, they're not gonna, they're not gonna try and and bring in Antonio Brown and then have just a complete mess. I think the Packers might be the most ideal fit. Yeah, the, and the Niners. The teams in the with the most likely chance are the Redskins, Titans, and Raiders. Titans, I'm there. No, no, there. No, he he would personally fight Marcus Mariota in the parking lot after every game. <laughs> <laughs> but if the Red but the Redskins, as long as they don't give up a first round pick and they can still get him and then get a quarterback in the first round, then I think you got some movement there. Yeah. The Raiders, they I mean, if he wants to win, that's not the place he wants to go. Yeah. So but but he's done this to himself if he just didn't say a lot. I mean Yeah, that's true. Could have went to the Giants, yeah. who knows? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine that. Imagine. Yeah. So, uh, Antonio Brown, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> All right, talks of the NFL draft are really beginning to rumble. With Arizona just hiring Cliff Kingsbury, what should they do with their first overall pick? Okay, who wants to start this first? Because I have, like, a full-on draft day plan. Me too. I, I, feel, like, <laughs> I feel like Kevin Costner. I did such a good job here. Ryan, how about you start? I think it's Nick Bosa trade. I think you guys are going to talk about trading Rosen. <laughs> I do I personally disagree. I think, I mean, I'm just thinking long term. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is going to work. He's going to be fired in two, two and a half years, and you're you're either going to have a ruined Josh Rosen or you're going to have a quarterback in Kyler Murray who can't do anything outside of the the system Kingsbury runs. So you go with the safe option, solidify the defense, especially in a division where defense is prominent, where offense is are also very good. I mean, you got the Rams and Seahawks running game is pretty good. So get the best player available, get Nick Bosa, or get two, three first uh, in the future to to keep going because Kyler Murray, that's that's just a recipe for disaster. All right. Well, I'll have to disagree with you on that one, right? Well, yeah, I knew you guys were going for the direction. <laughs> I think here's, here's uh, what I think the Cardinals should do. They should trade back to at least number three. Uh, 49ers and Jets won't pick Murray. I thought, oh, they could trade back to four and get one of the Raiders' first-round picks, but the Raiders might undercut them and pick Murray. So I'm just like, eh, I don't know about that. So I said 49ers or Jets. Um, you'll get more picks in this draft. Why away. would the 49ers or Jets trade up? So, what, they can what, get, so they can get Boza. What incentive? I don't I don't know if the gap is that big between Bosa and, and number two to where the – yeah, you don't do that. If it's not a QB, I don't or know, a Jadavian Clown. Well, if it's a pass rusher, I think so. I oh. I think so. That's a and the Jets. So, the Jets defense. So you're was, saying the Jets defense was horrendous last yeah, year. Yeah, and they can get Quinn and Williams. And they but they ran a four eight two forty. They could get three hundred pounds. I I don't see why the Jets would give up two first in the future just to get a player who might have an extra sack what a year. A, what about the Raiders? The you Raiders think they could trade back, and then the Raiders get the first overall pick. The, if the Raiders, if they move up to the first overall pick, it's pretty clear cut who they're taking. Anyone who trades up in this draft is getting a quarterback. Okay. There's not there's not a whole lot there. So it's the Cardinals are going to have to be forced to to either take Kyler number one or, I mean, risk it for the biscuit and trade it further down and and see what happens there. But okay. I don't I don't see how. Deontay, what's your, are, what's your first step? Okay. So, the first step. Is so, trade. so, Ryan has Cardinals just need to stand pat. Both are bust. And I have trade back to th- number three. What, what do you have? I have trade back to number six. Number six? Who number six. Well, Giants. The Giants who take Haskins. And, That's and here's, why I say, move. here's why I say trade back. No, because I think the Giants with this pick would take Kyler. Haskins isn't a person you have to trade up for. 
But with this, in this instance, you take Kyler. Here's why. I said this is morning for the Cardinals. Because with that sixth pick, you're in prime position where nobody will really judge you for taking DK Metcalf, which is what I think they would do with the number six pick. Because see, I don't even. That fit, seems high. Fits, that it, seems incredibly it, high for a running or for well, a wide receiver it's, who, it's, was, who was who was a borderline first rounder. It's high. Well, look at John. I uh, said last year with Josh Allen, I think the combine kind of inflates well, John draw Russ. stock to unbelievable levels. Well, I think DK Metcalf, as unbelievable as he is, he's a product of the, the same. I don't system. think he's a product of the combine. If you go watch his highlights, you'll see that he's not a product of. And, and John Ross became a, a top 10 pick just because of his 40. I, 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 jo- Josh Allen, not John Ross. No, I'm, I'm bringing up John Ross. In this situation, and, and DK Metcalf is just an absolute. What I'm saying, specimen. For, for for a young quarterback to build their confidence, what do you usually need? You need a big body receiver who can go up and save them a few times when they might throw a bad ball. And John Ross was never going to save Andy Dalton from anything. Nobody can save Andy Dalton from himself, so that's not a good comparison here. But think about it: they trade back to the number six spot. They're probably going to get the Giants number one next year, which more than likely will not be high in Eli Manning's final year, maybe ten to fifteen at the best for their pick. And then you'll probably also snag an extra second or a third. And in this instance, you can also grab um, Moreau from LSU, the tight end, or Steckenberger from um, A&M, the tight end. Because what the what the Cardinals don't have right now is a solidified offense. All they have is Josh Rosen, Fitzgerald, who probably is going to play as last year. The running back oh, yeah. position is solidified. Don't got to worry about that one. But you get a number one receiver. You get a number one tight end to put around Rosen because that defense – Trust me, it does not. It does not need much work. That defense is fine. It is fine. I you took Christian Kirk last year with. Now okay, so now you have a young Kirk, you have a young Metcalf, you have a young tight end with a young quarterback, and a I, system that's more designed for young players. There's a there's a lot of of wide receivers that are going to be taken in the the late first, early second. Well, yeah, I mean, there also another option is even maybe trading further back and selecting Marquise Brown. You could get more the, the further back you trade. Anyway, if they say go to, who was it, the Rams or Eagles that jumped way up a couple years ago? For Wentz, yeah, the Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles jumped way up. So, I mean, maybe if they get back to the mid-first round and then select maybe DK is more appropriate in that situation. Mac, or, um, Marquise Brown is more appropriate in that situation. But I think what they can do is they can get rid of that number one pick and bring in a haul of young offensive talent to build around Rosen because drafting Kyler will be probably the dumbest thing that they can do, which I think they will do it. They shouldn't do it. Why do you think it's dumb? Because you just drafted a quarterback at 10. You traded up for a quarterback at 10 last year. You don't select the quarterback. You don't. Because then that's Unless you have a plan for Rosen already in place. Well, he's like, he he is you, he was just announced on the trading block. Like what? But Ro- you don't you don't want to draft Kyler and still have Rosen because then yeah. you you cut that price in half because no one's going to be like oh. You know, we'll give you two first, even though you have a surplus. Yeah. You know, it, well, it diminishes the value of Rosen well, if you take Murray bef- uh, before he's traded. Well, no, here's the, here's a problem with that. If you just took a quarterback the last year, give him a chance. He took – look, think about it. Look at Jared Goff. He probably performed worse than Rosen did in his first year. Actually, yeah. not probably. He did perform worse in the first year. Carson Lynch was so-so. But Jared Goff looked horrible. Everybody wrote him off as a bus. Everybody called the Rams stupid for trading up for him. They didn't give him a chance. And then once he got a coach that could help him out, and I'm not saying Cliff Kingsbury is the next Sean McVay or is any quarterback savior, but I do think his system is going to be better than what Steve Wilkes had in place. And I think it will help Rosen's development. But I think surrounding him with more pieces is going to be more important than... No one's blaming Rosen for his performance. Well, yeah. Everyone knows he lacks... Well, yeah, he didn't he have the talent. offensive... We- and not saying Fitz is a bad person, but Christian Kirk was still learning the game. Yeah, Fitz is getting older. They didn't have a solidified tight end. David Johnson's health is so-so. So I think it's like a Jared Goff. As soon as they put talent around Jared Goff, what happened? Takes off. It's a system problem, though. It, Kingsbury doesn't match up necessarily with Josh Rosen's play style. You've seen Josh Rosen move around that pocket. <laughs> uh, he like does a wet napkin. <laughs> but I think if Cliff, if Cliff Kingsbury wants to last beyond two, two and a half years, He's going to tailor his offense around his quarterback instead of See, going away last I, year's draft plan. You, and you can't scrap last year's you, draft. You don't, you don't, I think that's you, what they're going to do. I think it is what they're going to do. But it's Kingsbury don't. to not run the system he did. Yeah. You know how many other NFL I mean, coaches that they could have taken if they wanted to just kind of foster it around Josh yeah. Rosen? But why? They, it's the way they see the NFL going. 
See, the only way I will approve of them drafting Kyler first and trading Josh Rosen is if they can get a haul of second and third rounders. To Because you give Kyler the same offense that Josh Rosen was in, he's still not going to be all that successful. If Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald are your only options, that's a problem because one still, one's receiver is what it takes them usually to... Don't, don't you think that they'd be able to draft a decent wide receiver if they do get a good haul for Rosen? They might be able to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's a, that's my second step is trade Josh Rosen. Could get a good haul. Rosen doesn't fit Kingsbury's mold. Basically what we've been talking about. But then again, is oh. that before or after they draft Kyler? It's before. Okay. So well, before, they're going to have to the draft even starts. Yeah, they'd have to make a move. Well, yeah. if they trade Rosen before, we know what they're doing with the first pick. So yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well. Place your bets. <laughs> that'll, that'll set the dominoes in yeah. place. But if they do draft Kyler before, then they screw themselves. Do we, do we all have the Cardinals drafting Murray? No, wait, you have that. No, I have Bosa or Bust. You, do, I don't do think you, do Kyler's going to be a successful quarterback. I want to see it as a fan, but if I'm a, if I'm a GM, I, I steer away because you put him in that division with Aaron freaking Donald. Can't hit him if you can't catch him. Well, he, d- he, did, he did annihilate. <laughs> this, isn't, annihilate. this isn't Big 12 defenses, it, though. It, look how he played against Alabama. Well, he didn't run a 40, did he? No, he will at his pro. What, what, what 40 do you think Aaron Donald runs? Probably a 4.8, 4, 8, 4 8, 5? No, I'll give him a 4.7. Four, <laughs> Faster? 4.6, four, okay. four, 4.7. Four, so Ky- 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 we'll find uh, out Kyler's numbers at his pro day. Yeah, you, I just don't see how you can put a 5.9. I mean, he five bulked ten. up. 5.10. 5.10. That's, that's a generous. <laughs> but, on the other hand, the Cardinals' ineptitude is going to be a great day for the, uh, what do you call them? The, Ram- or the <laughs> 49ers and Jets. Because the 49ers are most certainly going to pick Nick Bosa if he's there. And then the Jets are going to follow suit and put Quentin Williams next to Leonard Williams. They'll take him regardless, I think. So they're, And the Jets are then all of a sudden going to have a mean front four, at least front four. I mean, I don't know about the rest of the team, but I mean, we're not talking about the rest of the Jets team. Jets need a freaking receiver. The Jets need to maybe, I don't know, they may need to trade back a few spots and wait for Marquise Brown or uh, they could. Metcalf. But... But then again, Quinn Williams would be Quinn Williams would be pretty nasty. Yeah, that's Nikhil that's Harry, right. AJ Brown. Then again, one of those Clemson Hakeem guys Butler. might be there. Huh? One of those Clemson defenders might fall to the second round. Yeah. Colin Farrell, Dexter Lawrence. Yep. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be pretty good. All right. So uh, basically, to sum it all up, you have the Deontay. You have the Cardinals drafting Murray. I think they will draft Murray. They shouldn't draft Murray. But you think they will? But Steve Kahn is. Don't. And I think he will and pick then, Murray. And you think, like, this is your prediction, is they will pick Bosa. Not that you want them to. But no, you, I I think they they take Bosa. Okay. I, well, I think they draft Murray. I think they, they make the right trades and make the right moves, and then they draft Murray, and with the picks that they get from the different transactions, they will be able to build an offense around him. I just hope Murray doesn't stink. Because the Cardinals are going to be bad. For, if the Cardinals don't know this draft, they're going to be bad for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's one of those Joey or Johnny Manziel picks. Because Ryan, oh, Ryan brought up a good point. Why would they hire Kingsbury if they w- didn't want to get a quarterback like Murray? Yeah, I mean, he, well, first he failed all, at Texas Tech. First of all, why would you want to hire Kingsbury? Because they want to be like the they Chiefs. They want to be like Texas Tech. Well, to be like the Chiefs, you got to have a bad defense, and the Cardinals don't have that. Well, but, Texas Tech had a bad but, defense. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, but it, sometimes you really do have to question a coach who couldn't, who had Patrick Mahomes, and couldn't get to a bowl game. Like at some point, you have to kind of. Like, no, uh, that's just how much of a difference there is between Big Twelve football and NFL. I'm, I'm just saying. All right, All right. Whose draft stock skyrocketed after the combine? Obvious answer on that one. I have talk, we talked about him multiple times. I have show. Miles. I, it I have Miles Boykin, the wide receiver out of Notre Dame. You, none of you guys mentioned him when you were talking about wide receivers. He yeah. ran a four, He's six foot four, ran a four point four two forty, and a forty three and a half inch vertical. Well, dang! And you talked about big bodied receivers. He's the guy. Well, he's he, not. He's not the number one big receiver that I would pick. But hey, wouldn't be that bad of a pick, especially if you are a team like. The Bears, or some somebody that just needs that one last weapon that could reach up and get the balls, because God knows Kevin White isn't the answer. Oh, Lord. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he's still there. So, uh, yeah, it, it was impressive. It was impressive. I have four. 
Um, Montez Sweat, obvious answer. Yeah. I think he's going to get billed as kind of the next Vaughn Miller. Um, Quentin Williams, like uh, Nick Wright said, or somebody said, they said that he's a slam dunk. There's no chance that he's a bust, which I think is true. He's not going to be like maybe Aaron Donald. Well, he's, he's not. He's an Alabama defensive player. He's going to be fine. <laughs> well, yeah, he, but I think he's a for sure, for sure going to end up in the Pro Bowl at some point. Um, DK Metcalf, obviously, yeah. his, his draft stock skyrocketed. There's going to be, there's probably going to be a team dumb enough to pick him in the top ten. It's going to, it happens every year, based off the combine. It's going to happen. It, overpaying him a little bit. Yeah, and then Taylor Rapp from Washington. Okay. Think, but the thing is, like they said, this draft is defensively loaded. So mm-hmm. it is. They said they said the Patriots could get a defensive player they wanted at pick thirty two in this draft. So I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, must be nice. Ryan, who impressed you? DK Metcalf. That's, That's your only answer? answer? Yeah. Oh, why, okay. why? Who else? Should we just get a poster of DK Metcalf and put him up in the studio? Maybe <laughs> the Fort Hayes fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, he, he earned it. He definitely earned it. Uh, Deontay, we'll start with you with this next one. What do you want your favorite team to do in this year's draft? What do you want the Chiefs to do in the draft? Well, I, want the Chief, I don't want the Chiefs to draft defense just for the sake of drafting it. I want them to nail the picks that they have. So we got 29. I'm based on what I've been hearing is that DeAndre Baker is going to be there at 29. Wow. I say take him, take DeAndre Baker at 29. And this is going to surprise some, but in round two, take a running back. That's what, whether it be Justice Hill. Well, it's not that surprising or, since you lost Kareem. Now. Kareem. <laughs> Given that your defense was god awful, it'd probably be like, okay, don't know why you didn't pick defense. But well, it's like it, it depends on how free agency goes because based on what I'm hearing, the Chiefs could end up with one or two marquee players in free agency. More than likely, one for sure. They're keying yeah. in on Landon Collins. Maybe he sees that he gets to play with Pat Mahomes, and that brings him on in. Possibly Eric Weddle. Him and Tyreek had a hey big head chat on Twitter. So <laughs> you, you know, so I think that. But what I want. No matter, I don't care who we bring in. I don't care if we bring in Patrick Peterson. I don't care if we bring in Deion Sanders and Chant Bailey. DeAndre Baker at 29. Okay. Second round, maybe if if we don't get a safety in the draft, then go with the safety in the second round. Then third round, I still think Justice Hill might be there. Rodney Anderson might be a sleeper. I saw some people having Benny Snell projected to fall to the sixth round. I don't know what type of mock was it's that. A, it's his injury problems. That's, that's the main reason. Mm-hmm. Possibly Bryce Love, who was a Heisman candidate before his injury. Heisman's problems. finalist. <laughs> finalist. Um, Chiefs only have nine million in cap space right now. Uh, that, so that's before. That's, that's before, before Houston. That's before Houston, Barry, and uh, Ford. Ford's a likely trade candidate. He doesn't fit the four three scheme. Hey, I'm just saying, as it stands right now, they got. Oh well, yeah, you don't. Well, mil. they they've already openly put Justin Houston on the trade block. They said yeah. they're willing to trade D Ford, and they're waiting for Eric Bray to become a post June first designation for release, which will. And then Daniel Sorensen is more than likely gone. He's a safety that we don't need. And then Xavier Williams is more than likely gone. After those, I believe we were we are up to fifty million. Let's see, close Let's to fifty million. That Fifteen. That'd be twenty four. You're only getting a million and a half from Barry. Or wait, no. After after June first, that'll go away. Okay, and then fourteen, thirty, thirty-six. Yeah, about forty, somewhere in the forties. So yeah, and that's enough cap space to a extend Tyreek since his new deal wouldn't kick in until next year. So yeah, you better nail those defensive picks though. If you're losing your best defensive player, your best defensive player over the last five years, and then well, yeah, the, the best thing- safety that the franchise has ever had. Well, um, so I'm, well, the Chiefs also have two second-round picks, one from the Rams trade with Peters and then ours, which are happening to be a, f- be a few spots apart. So I think they can in the first spend the first three picks in the first two rounds on defense. You're, going to, you're guaranteed to probably know about two of them. In this draft, you might be able to nail all three with certain, co- with certain confidence. So, Okay. Um, that, that's your, your, what the Chiefs should do from, they, from Chief Ph.D.? What they should do, and I do think that they do need a running back. I mean, yeah, Justice Hill. If he beeps, I really liked him because he's a speed back. He'd be really good playing with Mahomes, especially catching screens. But we already have Damian Williams, so I'm not sure if we need two lightning backs. So Benny and David Montgomery. Yeah, I think if he's there in the second round, you got to do it because you got to. You just have to. So okay. 
I'm hoping. One can hope. Now, Ryan, since you don't have a favorite team, I told you just to pick a team and then <laughs> tell them how they should draft. So who'd you pick? Well, I went with the Packers. Okay. Uh, they need a defensive end or a safety on the defensive end front. They Clay Matthews is getting up in age. Nick Perry's always injured. And they're running with, with a bunch of practice squad guys at the end of the year. So got to get someone in there on the edge. It's a... Uh, they got Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford, and, and Trubisky in the in the division now. So the the quarterback pool isn't terrible. You got to get to them, pressure them, just like every other team, like the Bears do successfully. So so you got to do that. Clown um, Clown Farrell uh, is out there. Dexter Lawrence. They they got the twelfth pick. So I mean, if we see people reaching for quarterbacks and wide receivers, a few defensive players might might drop a little further down there. Or or safety, they traded Ha Ha Clint Dix at the deadline to the the Redskins because they knew he wasn't going to resign. So get a safety in there. I mean, basically anything defense. And then they also need to get some weapons too. Whether that's trying to get Antonio Brown, I mean, you can't do that draft, but whether that's getting a veteran or snagging someone in the second or third like a Hakeem Butler, be be some options for him. But that's what I got. All right. Well, I think the Chicago Bears, unfortunately, need to trade Jordan Howard. He's, just, he's not fit for Nagy system. He's done his job well and right, but it, it's time to trade him, try to get as much value as you can now. Um, I think probably worth maybe a fringe second rounder, wouldn't you think? I think second or third. Okay. So probably, probably a third because he's going into his third year I'd of his rookie deal. So. I'd say late second, early third, because um, Bears don't have a pick until the third. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Jordan Howard would not be second or third it'd be a third maybe really if garoppolo is only worth a second you think jordan nah, howard's worth about 20 mm, picks he's lower? got a point he's got a point okay but we'll get <laughs> get something get out of garoppolo jordan howard. is a specialty deal but yeah. get, get something out of jordan howard late third into the fourth and then uh draft a running back more suited for naggy system a justice hill something like that or get a wide receiver like paris campbell uh, or Hakeem Butler or Boykin. Oh, those three are all going to be gone before the third round. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm saying like yeah. like not them, but get a receiver, um, and then follow that up with solid offensive linemen and roll defensive players because the Bears defense next year, it's going to be good, but it's not going to be the same. Why not? Because they're losing uh, Amos. Amos, and they're, they're, there's a couple other key role players that they're going to be losing, so you kind of have to reload that. It's not going to be the same as last year, but it's still going to be good. So you have to kind of retool every year. That's something that some defenses get wrong. So, uh, yeah, with the Bears, it's more of a free agency type of offseason. That's where they need to really focus their attention, uh, get some veterans in, get you over that hump, sign a kicker, for God's sakes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with the Bears, there's not a whole lot of pressure in the draft as much as there is in free agency. So. The draft is exciting, isn't it? Draft season, the best season. It's pretty good. All right, Super Bowl MVP Nick Foles is expected to sign with the Jags sometimes, sometime next week. How's he going to do in Jacksonville? 8-8, eight and eight, I think, at best. Uh, going against the Colts team who, I mean, they made the playoffs, won a playoff game. Uh, Don't give them that much credit for that one. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> won a playoff game. You got Houston who it just seems like they're, they've are they got the pieces in the regular season but just can't put it together in the postseason, but still makes them a threat. And then Tennessee, we're still waiting on the on the turn on Mariota. And if they, they snag Antonio Brown, we've mentioned him multiple times in the show, uh, that makes the offense that much better. They got Derrick Henry, who exploded last year too, so the competition's already stiff as it is in that division, and I don't think Nick Foles is going to put them over that hump. He'd, I'd take Deshaun Watson over Foles. I'd take Luck over Foles, and honestly, Mariota and Foles is a, is a toss-up. So 8-8, eight and eight, I think, at best. Do you think he's going to be the same Nick Foles that the Eagles have seen from time to time, or is it going to be L.A., or not L.A., Rams, uh, Nick Foles all over again? Wait, he was they were in L.A. when... He was playing with them, right? Were they still in St. Louis? They were in L.A. That okay. was the, okay. So yeah, yeah. That was, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, was it going to be Philadelphia 
Nick Foles or is it going to be L.A. Nick Foles? I think L.A. Nick Foles. Because, I mean, he's, he's the outright starter now. He's not an underdog anymore. But I think even more concerning, not even about just Nick Foles, it's look at who they're playing next year. And, of course, no year is a guar- no team being good is a guarantee, but there are some guarantees. Yeah. And at home, which really doesn't matter for them because I think anybody can walk in there and beat the brakes off of the Jaguars. But at home, they get the Chiefs, Saints, Chargers. That could be three, three L's. Yikes. Three L's <laughs> off the top the right there. And then you got the Texans and Colts coming in who are clearly the superior teams to the Jaguars. And the Colts have $107 million in cap space. And they have a playoff berth and a playoff win to pitch to free and, agents. And they could have Le'Veon Bell. They could have Le- they get Le'Veon Bell. I'm scared. <laughs> Boom. They also get the Titans, who, you know, the Titans are a wild card. You know, the only two games I could for sure say that I think they'll win at home right now, for sure, 100%, Buccaneers-Jets. The only two. I think the Chiefs will. Do you think they can beat the Jets guaranteed? Okay, maybe you're right. Guaranteed? Maybe not even uh, the Buccaneers. I don't yeah. think there's any home win for well, the yeah, Bucs. It, it is decent. decent. Yeah. I don't think there's it with Bruce Arians. Yeah, they got Arians. I don't there. know if there's any home game for the Jags that you can just say, oh, for sure, they're going to win. And then away at Carolina, surely Carolina's not going to be as bad as last year. No. The Falcons, they're not going to be as bad as last year. Their entire defense dropped like flies in the first game. Yeah. And, they, I mean, of course, they still have Julio, so they're... And then they got the Broncos. Say what you want about them, but it's hard. It's it, stingy. Stingy. They're always a tough team to yeah. beat. Uh, at the Raiders, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. At the Raiders, at the Bengals, uh, and then home versus the or away at the Titans, at the Texans, at the Colts. So within their division, I could easily see them getting swept, maybe splitting with the Titans and getting swept by the Texans and Colts. I could yeah. see one and five in the division right there. Chiefs, Saints, Chargers. I could see another three L's right there. Mm. <laughs> Saint or uh, Broncos, Falcons, Panthers. Could he, now, of course, a few of those games will probably tilt in the Jags' direction because yeah. of their defense. Like against a team like the Broncos, I think they could go into Denver and snatch a it's win. <laughs> just based on Jalen Ramsey, can probably make him do a few thing, a few dumb things. At Carolina, I'm more worried about that one because. Yeah. So yeah, not looking good in Jacksonville, or maybe not, and not as good as, as. And it's not their fault. It's not that they're a bad team. It's just everyone it's just around that, them's better. Yeah, it's just that the Colts out of nowhere got really good. Yeah. The Texans, Will Fuller is going to be back. That's he's going to add another dimension to their offense. The Titans, we know what the Titans can do. Lord forbid if they add Antonio Brown, they might come in there and take that division. Mm-hmm. Jets, yada yada. But Chargers, Saints, Chiefs, probably by and far their toughest game, toughest three games this yeah. year. Yep. And yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, it, I, if they make the playoffs, it'll be impressive, and I'll yeah. apologize. They'll earn it. They'll earn. Oh, it. they'll have to earn it. Yeah. So, any other football grievances before we hit the break? Um, I do not. All right, fantastic. Well, it is Ash Wednesday, um, so for the occasion, we're going to be playing some Slayer and some Black Sabbath. Uh, the Penalty Box Sports Show will be right back after this quick. Ash Wednesday, music break. And welcome back, everyone, to the Penalty Box Sports Show live here on KFHS Radio. That was When the Stillness Comes by Slayer and Into the Void by Black Sabbath. That's from their Master of Reality album. Wow, what an album. It's one of my favorites. Do you guys like that? Yeah. We, during the break, we were discussing some of the concerts and the sporting events we're going to hit this year, and it's, it's stacking up. It is stacking up. Looks like fun. Yeah. Stack up the cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that Domino's money. Yeah. So. <laughs> As long as you're not falling on your ass <laughs> and bruising it, <laughs> uh, it's a sore one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, NBA talk with the Lakers' current struggles. Do you think everything will be resolved by next season? Yeah, because the only player on the team I think that transfers over to t- next year is LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take ten players just to just to get Davis if they want him, but. I mean, bottom line is, yeah, it'll it'll be different. They they don't walk away without at least one superstar, if not two. Um, whether that be Davis, Clay, Kyrie, uh, I mean, the possibilities are endless. So, yeah, they'll they'll be better next year for sure. 
but the way it looks now, not so much. Here's our 10-day outlook. <laughs> <laughs> Deontay, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they'll be fine, but I don't necessarily believe that they'll still contend for it. But next year's going to be completely different if KD and Clay Thompson leave. Okay, never mind. Opens up the division. Yeah. Opens up the conference. No, no, no. It opens up the league. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah but I mean, it's the conference. That's the, that's the, the conference that's is magic. basically the I'd, league. I'd like yeah. to see Kyrie go to L.A. If that happens, they'll be fine. I think a good complimentary piece to Kyrie and LeBron will be AD. But he's going to cost a lot. Mm-hmm. But it won't matter if... You got Kyrie, LeBron, and AD. Yeah, yeah. I think you'd be fine. You don't case. necessarily need the best because then you, you, yeah. you'd, you'd get a, you'd get a bunch of veterans who who would take yeah. the minimum to come. It, it, would, it would be a LeBron team, like what he had in Cleveland. Except it'd be better. Yeah, it'd be a better version of the 2016. Better Cavs. though, See, any any player you mention, like you say, Anthony Davis, okay, but that means they're losing all three of their core plus. And they're Any, uh, plus their best bench pieces. But then, and then they're going to bring so they're gonna have to, They'll have to, yeah. Then they can bring in that. Clay or Kyrie. You bring in any two superstars. I don't care who they lose. LeBron and two other mm. solidified superstars will make them an instant title contender, especially if Kevin Durant decides to go to New York, stay with Jimmy Butler or something like that. Yeah. Or Kevin Durant decides to go to Philadelphia, who's about one shooter away from you winning know, the league. There's, a, there's such thing as being too top-heavy. No, there's not. I think not, so. Not in the NBA. I Where think need, the Golden, Golden State's been been pretty consistent because their bench has been. Well, if you have it, it steps up. If you have Jack Squat under Kyrie and and James and Davis, then yeah, then you're gonna you're not Which gonna that's be. That's what they can play 48 minutes each, like 2K. Like but that's the thing; they're not gonna be that top heavy because they're gonna be able to get the the pieces that LeBron wants and the pieces that you see. In LeBron teams that win championships, and it's like when he went to Miami after they got Wade and Bosh, and they brought in all these other players taking veteran minutes. And Ra- <laughs> where the hell is Melo? If if that's the same mentality, what? where's been where's Carmelo been the last couple of months? Uh, hiding out with Lala. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because it's not LeBron's team yet. Look, this the Lakers aren't set up the way LeBron likes it yet. And that's, he, that's probably the reason does, why there's so much damn drama. He doesn't like young players. And people are saying, oh, LeBron's going to break up the young core. Let's get one thing clear. This young, this, up. this young core, no matter how long they stayed together, were not winning Jack regardless. Lonzo, Ingram, and Kuzma were not ever going to be title contenders. Ingram's they, only got one more year left on his deal anyway, dang, I think. The Lakers' young core is the discount version of the Celtics' young core. No, dude. Lakers young core is on different teams. Julius Randle and D'Angelo oh, yeah. Russell. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Oh, man, I'm starting to think there's a trend going on here that I don't necessarily think it's the players. It's the it Lakers. It might be the Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Ding bong. Yeah. <laughs> who all right, so who, who would have realistically thought coming into the year, LeBron misses the playoffs, D'Angelo Russell makes it. If you would have said that, somebody would have smacked you into next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but D'Angelo Russell's more than likely going to be the sixth seed in the playoffs, and LeBron's not going to make it. Um, because it's not his team yet. Yeah, well, well he, he doesn't have his coach. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, used to, yeah. he used to play against his coach and used to dominate him. <laughs> he was drafted the same year. The same year? Exactly. Same year. So, one, he doesn't want Luke Walton there. He wants somebody who's going to let LeBron run the show the way that he mm-hmm. wants to run it. Like, yeah. I heard some rumors that Tyron Luke could go coach there. Go back to the place where he got stepped over. I mean, I guess it's not all bad. Yeah. Um, right on LeBron James' coattails. <laughs> one, <last time. laughs> one final run. All right. I hope the Lakers do win. I would like to see the Lakers win a chip before LeBron retires. So, yeah, so people could shut up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, let's stick in the uh, in the West with this one. Uh, could the Trailblazers be the unsung heroes of the West come playoff time? We haven't talked about them a whole lot. We've talked about the West plenty. But the Blazers, we haven't brought up a whole lot. No, they'll get swept again. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I, they, mm. Yeah. And I, if their first matchup is going to be Houston. Yeah, they'd have to play the best um, postseason in NBA history. Oh, no, their first matchup could be OKC as well. But I'm just saying, are, aren't they fourth right now? No, right the, now, the, 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 the four no, five. right now it's Warriors, Nuggets, Rockets at three, Thunder four, oh. Dr- Blazers five, Jazz six. And the okay. Thunder and Blazers play tomorrow. Yeah, so winner of that game takes over the four seat. Um, so you look at their first round matchup, the Thunder. The Thunder could... Uh, the Thunder likes to make things more difficult than they should be, but they'd still beat them. Yeah. Um, if they get the Rockets first round, forget about it. 
Not a chance. This, this not, one, that's the best chance they have, I think. No, I don't think anybody except the Warriors in the playoffs really has a chance against the Rockets team playing this hot. Yeah, they are playing pretty hot. Um, they could also, I mean, if they jump up, somehow jump up to three, they could get the Jazz first round, which is always a tough team, no matter who's on the team. They're always tough to play. Um, yeah, no, there, there, there will be no unsung heroes in this playoff. I think we have a, I think we have a pretty, I think we have a pretty firm idea of who the final four contestants participants will be in the Western Conference: Warriors, Nuggets, Rockets, Thunder. Yeah. Um, unless the Jazz come in there and just mess it all up, which they tend to do a lot, so you never know. But Clippers, Spurs, we're just gonna pretend like they aren't there. They're just they're kind of there for the ride. Unless the Clippers somehow beat the Nuggets in the first round, then all hell yeah. breaks loose in the West. <laughs> Not happening, but it's a nice thought. Yeah. We, we have to kind of entertain those ideas just to... <laughs> I mean, sure. well, like I said last week, I'm not completely sold on the Nuggets. Ryan is. Now, maybe I, maybe, I, they'll, <laughs> maybe they'll sell me next week when I see them play against Luka. Maybe maybe then they'll convince me. But right now, I'm not convinced. Okay. So until, until I see proof in the pudding that the Nuggets are a formidable team, I do not believe that they are a guarantee to win any series in the West. But the fact that their first matchup might be the Clippers probably makes things a little easier on them. But if the Jazz somehow slip to seven, then things get a little bit tougher because yeah. Donovan Mitchell has already won a playoff series. He know what it's like to win. The Nuggets have not won one with this young core. So he has a play little – and he took Russ and PG out of the playoffs last year. So, you know, I'm, no matter where the Jazz end up, they're a dangerous matchup for anybody. Yeah. And if, hey, you're talking about the Blazers being the unsung heroes. I think the Jazz will be the unsung heroes of the playoffs. Oh. They're going to come in and crash the party and probably get beat up second round. But yeah. nonetheless, <laughs> they're going to crash the party to some degree. So, Do you think NBA referees are becoming softer by the day? Because we just saw Trey Young get teed up and ejected for looking at somebody funny. I mean, it seems like every night there's – and especially superstars are starting to turn on the refs a little bit. With James Harden and Embiid. Usually you didn't see that a whole lot. They well, been, they've been soft. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but it just James it, Harden is the most fouled player in the league, so I don't know why he would bitch. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> well, because he didn't get, he didn't get a foul call one, one time. It's <laughs> in one ear, out the other. So yeah. on his and Embiid, I don't know. He's kind of he's a, mad at everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't think he likes anyone. It's yeah. tough to tell how genuine he is with his anger. But I, I think there are more touchy fouls. Uh, but it's just the way the game is. There's more money in it. You got to protect your assets. Is that is that the same issue in the NFL? Also? Yeah, it's every sport. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because nobody's showing up to an NBA game that's headlined by uh, Jeremy Grant and Eric Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you got to protect your stars. They're though. already sitting a quarter of the year as it is. Some of them, Kawhi probably misses probably 15, 20 games a year. So yeah, it, and I mean you see in the NFL with quarterbacks you see it in baseball too how you can't retaliate by by throwing a pitch at a player anymore without getting thrown out so mm-hmm. it's every sport across the board there's more touchy fouls just because there's more to lose and what do you think of that right you think it's soft I you think, think it's wimpy i think it you sucks to see i think it's just kind of a transition period though uh some of us are used to like the older fans are used to seeing the the pistons and the rough and tough play of back then. Ron I don't. Ar- Ron Artest. <laughs> yeah, I I don't necessarily do so. I don't see too much of a difference in the game. Okay, personally, Deontay, you got a bone to pick with some referees. Who's I, not, I, I got a bone to pick with the players and the referees. Well, who's the one that ejected Tim Duncan when he was on the bench? <laughs> We're laughing. Okay. Oh, was it Joey Crawford? I, I think so. I don't know. I, I doubt he's still in the league. A lot, no, he retired. Okay. A lot of people were saying Joey Crawford set the precedent for sensitive refing, and I think they are taking it too personal. Yeah. When a play, Like the other night, there was a video of Russ saying, come on, man, I've been in the league too long. Don't call that on me, man. Yeah. Like, they're, they're taking stuff like that too personal. They're letting it get to their heads. I mean. The, the they, players or the refs? The refs. Okay. Like, if a player is arguing, don't tee them up just because they're arguing with you. They're obviously not happy with the foul call. Hear them out, listen to what they got to say, then explain why you caught, why you called or yeah. didn't call something. And I, th- I think, I can't remember which game it was, but it was a Thunder game. Uh, Russ had a grievance. He had something to say to the ref, and they communicate. Yeah. They use their communication skills. Yeah. When That's the, ref- the America I believe in. You know what I've always been taught? 
you know, especially going through the criminal justice program, the, <laughs> the, the best way to communicate is with calm, with when you're calm. You communicate with, communicate when you're calm because when you're upset, when you're sweat, you're hot, and in the moment, you say things that you don't mean. You do things that you necessarily wouldn't do if you were calm. So when you can be calm, cool, and collect, and have a, you know, a positive conversation about you know why ref didn't call this or why the ref called that earlier in the game then the players can begin to have an understanding with the rest about what's okay and what's not okay now i would if i was a player i'd ask the rest why did they let james harden travel more because <laughs> every time they're like oh look there's james harden step back i'm like the dude jumped from the <laughs> jump from asia to europe in one step. <laughs> so, i mean so i think and the nba needs to be more transparent about it yeah like the, when the nfl says yeah the ref in the rams saints game messed up you messed up. The NBA or NBA doesn't. They put out the two minute report, but it's a two minute report. Yeah. And you never know which part of a game or a ref call could swing a game in a certain direction. So why why do people feel that the NFL or NBA need have an obligation to apologize for missed calls? It's their it's, league. It's not a. It's their officials. It's their it's money. Not, it's, it's not. It's not apologizing. It's, it's being transparent it's, with your it's, fans and it's See, explaining. But, but with the fans, it doesn't even matter. Well, it does it, matter. For us, it doesn't who, matter. Who if it's it, fair or not? If you, if your league makes a mistake, then you want to be able to explain that mistake. You just don't want to be behind closed doors. Just oh no, nothing happened. You want to be able to communicate, I like think, Deontay said. Communication is key. Communication is everything. In the world, uh, <laughs> I think you stand by and defend the human element as opposed to. Okay, human, okay, so okay, so I think that the, the right answer to any criticism towards the league regarding officiating is applications. Start handing people applications. Okay. Have them go through the extensive training that officials have to go through think, and see if they make it I through the first leagues, 30 leagues minutes of the class. I think leagues do a good job of, it, of introducing the human element, but at the same time, they need to say it was a bad call. Well, again, if you can, you, okay, when a player does something that necessarily is say unbecoming of an NBA player on the court they get fined for it right 20,000 30,000 yeah when a player screws up they get ejected and thrown out maybe if there was a flagrant two foul and they didn't necessarily intend for it to happen there's still repercussions for their actions but when the refs are out and players are human and in the moment and sometimes you do things that you don't want to do or that you necessarily didn't intend to do, but when the refs mess up, oh, it's their human. No, no, they're messing up point. continuously because they're not making a conscious effort to change because there's no hard repercussion for point. their actions. If the refs were getting fined, I guarantee you, and some people say, oh, it would scare them away from calls. No, it would force them to pay more attention to what's going on in the game and to make the accurate call and to get it right the first time. You instead don't of think they're paying attention to the game? Come, no. I think they're paying attention to the game. But what, what, so what, what are you doing when Harden's jumping across country to get a shot off? It's even it's even stuff like that, like letting them get letting the play, certain players get away with certain things. Because there's, I guarantee you, if D'Angelo Russell tries that same step back, he's getting called for it. If, Curry tried it, didn't he? And he got called for. A try. Oh yeah, he's. Yeah. I think he's pretty sure he mocked Harden when yeah. he got called for it. So the, I, the refs aren't doing anything the league hasn't already told them to do. I think the refs are not being held to a standard as a player. Why would the refs care about players' health if just on their own? Oh, uh, because there's probably money in it. They probably enjoy the – back when they were growing up, they probably enjoyed the rough and toughness of the NBA. But, yeah, why would they have police themselves? Well, like, it's not necessarily policing themselves. It's just about getting it right. It's not even about calling hard fouls, but it's about this thing that I learned called firmness, fairness, and consistency – when you have a yeah. certain ref crew, you have to be firm. You have to let the players know with your crew specifically what you will allow, what you won't allow. You have to be fair. Call everything even for both sides. And you have to be consistent. Yeah. If it's the first quarter and you're going to call a foul for, you know, pushing somebody whether they're driving for a layup, then you need to call the same thing. I don't care if it's crunch time, 10 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Be firm with it, be fair with it, and be consistent. If you I can think, do those, yeah. things th those three things, the relations with the players will get better, the relations with the fans will get better. And ultimately, you will have more appreciation for the referees of the NBA game. But right now, I, I right just, now, there's I've a been lot a, of dissonance. There. I've been a basketball referee, and that was for <laughs> third and fourth grade. Oh, and the calls I made were not pleasing half the crowd. I think so the, 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 I don't I, think I, I, I don't understand think there's the ever going to be a time when referees okay. just just get to be their own self. Okay, the referees may not always please the crowd because somebody's always going to cry and complain about something. But when the NBA players are going on record and taking fines for criticizing refs, knowing that it's going to get them a 25K fine, then there's a problem. Because what do Americans love most? Money. And when they're willing to give up money to express their opinion, there's something wrong there. Yeah. I think that 
you had a good point. I think that the main issue is refs aren't being consistent. I think everyone's just quick to blame the refs for everything. It's, it's, not, it's not blaming the refs. They're just not being consistent. Yeah, we're, we're not blaming them for certain teams losing games. They just have to do a little bit better job. And if you're going to call one thing for, Le- for Harden, I don't care. Call it for the 12th player to come in the game. Just call it all the same. Call it all game long and let it be known what you're... You know, like certain crews are like, okay, we don't call hand checking is tight, and then the next crew, the next game, we do call hand checking tight. Like, give the coaches a briefing about how the, and then you can even watch film about the, you can watch film and see what they call. And I mean, I think the refs and players just need to build. They they have to be transparent with each other, and and you know, communicate and communicate. When you communicate, everything gets a lot better. And I think Adam Silver is probably trying to create ways for this to happen. Because he's a great commissioner, unlike some great. commissioners. <laughs> so, I mean, it's the players are sensitive. I'm not going to deny that. Some players are sensitive. But the refs are also sensitive. And the fans just sometimes just need to stay out of it. But, yeah, you know. All right. Which team is on the verge of a huge late season push? I've got, um, I've got the Hawks. The Hawks? And, and you were that's, just that's, tra- that's an outrageous. You one. were just trashing Trey Young as we went to commercial break. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. Because <laughs> remember, I brought. Yeah, up I said he was straight garbage at the beginning <laughs> of the year. Yes, he was. But he's turned it around. They're winning games. It's a young core. Um, I, I don't know. I see a little momentum. the The East sucks, so they're only eight games back of the eight seed in the division or in the conference. What? Ain't no way they're catching Charlotte, man. A- eight games and they've got, I think, twenty left, or that might be a bit much. No, nah, they. Uh, Let me take. They a got look. about eighteen. Eighteen, yeah. Something like that. I'm just saying that I, I said that was an outrageous one. That that one's a little far and left. But okay, so the more realistic one, yeah, okay. The more realistic one is the Kings. Okay. They're sitting three games back of the Spurs, um, and I don't necessarily like the Clippers really. To, to make the playoffs. So it's a young team starting to gain momentum too. They're they're out Marvin Bagley right now, so that hurts. But but I think they definitely, especially with the Lakers kind of falling back even further, the competition, the pressure of trying to fend not only people off from behind you, but trying to climb in front. I think it might I think it could be a Sacramento year. Well I think the seventy sixers are gonna make a good push because I think the Pacers are gonna eventually run out of steam. Um, and it's going to be a three-headed monster in the East. The Sixers are going to be in serious contention uh, with the Raptors and the Bucks. Uh, right now, the 76ers are seven games back out of first. Um, I think the order will still finish Bucks, Raptors, 76ers, but it's going to be a lot tighter than it looks right now. Um, if only the 76ers had a shooter, huh, Deontay? If Man, only. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're one shooter away from being the Warriors. Who do you have going on a late-season push? Celtics. The Celtics? After they, 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 after they did finally get their crap together? <laughs> oh, they they probably, outside of the Warriors, easily, pound for pound, have the most talent on the team in the league. Okay. And if the... So, yeah, when I said so, last week that that they were still my favorites in the East, I was... I was no, no, they favorites in okay, the East. That's, okay, that's fav- a little bit favorites different. a little far, okay, because I'm assuming Sixers are probably going to jump the Pacers for the 3C. First yeah. round, Pacers, Celtics, no Oladipo, Celtics probably win that 4 or 5. Next round, they're going to play the... Poss- probably the... Bucks. Bucks. Hornets. <laughs> okay, so more likely the Bucks. The Bucks are not a team that is immune to getting beat up by the Boston Celtics. They are not. I think the Celtics are the perfect team to beat up on Giannis. Why? Because Giannis won't outshoot you. Actually, the Bucks won't outshoot you. They'll out-tough you. Yeah. But the Celtics have a team that can outshoot you. Tatum can outshoot you. Smart can even shoot when he feels like it. Kyrie can do what Kyrie does. I don't think Bledsoe can hold Kyrie for four games. No way. That the Celtics are deeper than the Bucks. Necessarily not better. The Bucks are obviously the better team, but... Celtics get hot at the right time. They can catch the Bucks and beat them. Mm. Um, so, wait, you have the Celtics as a favorite? Not as a favorite. Okay. But I think so, they have so a, yeah, you, I'm not saying they will beat the Bucks, but I'm giving all the reasons of why they can okay. beat the Bucks. So, yeah. And then if the second round comes to Raptors Sixers, that's going to be a. Yeah, that'll be good. Oh, <laughs> that one, I can't even give a 
who might win. I don't honestly between Raptors and Sixers, I can't tell who's the better team. We haven't used this term in a while, but that one would be a slobber knocker. Oh wait. Oh, well, that would be Toronto all the way. All the way, but it would yeah. be. Come on, Ben Simmons can has no discipline. What do you mean no discipline? What do you mean no discipline? I, I just see a total collapse. A to- okay, so you're telling. So first of all, you are you aware that the Sixers have two players that could lock up Kawhi? Two. Yeah. Jimmy and Ben Simmons could both lock up Kawhi. Ben because of his length. Jimmy because he's Jimmy. He's a better version of Patrick Beverly. Who, 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 Kawhi, though. But who else? But think about, it, think, think, think about it. Think about it. You got you put you lock, you have Jimmy Butler stick with Kawhi more than like who's got Kyle Lowry. Ben Simmons is the point guard. He can guard Kyle yeah, Lowry. So I just did this on two K. It works yeah. perfectly. So you put <laughs> Jimmy on on Kawhi, and you put Ben since Ben is the point guard. So then you, you, got, up you got Joel Embiid, and then so you put so Joel Marcus Embiid Saul. matches up on Marcus, Marcus Saul. Saul, and then you've got Siakam, Siakam, and Tobias Harris. Siakam and Ibaka. Is that okay, Ibaka, co- Ibaka comes off the bench. And then you have... It'd you you would you, you would put Tobias Harris on Pascal Siakam. And Bede and Marcus Gasol would run together more than likely. It would be Butler and Kawhi. Redick and whoever their shooting guard is. <laughs> Danny Green. That, those are like the two players that really don't matter that much. And then Simmons and Lowry. And that's why I'm saying I couldn't tell you who could win because... Kyle Lowry is great as a shooter as he is. When he gets cold, he gets really cold. And Ben Simmons just can't shoot, so. No. You don't know. All right. Fantastic. Playoff time's almost here. That's ex- it, it, it's, a, it's a nice little pocket for sports right now. Yeah, I might have to turn the cable back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be a good time. Some NBA predictions first. Uh, tomorrow, Pacers at Bucks. 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 And then Thunder at Trailblazers Thursday night. Thunder. Thunder. I have to go with the Blazers here. After what I saw last night in Minnesota, I'm like, okay, Thunder gonna, kind of in a weird spot right now. Not necessarily like abandoned ship. But, uh, but especially, the Trailblazers uh, don't have... But Portland's pretty tough to play. The red-hot Carl Anthony Towns. That's true. And Rose did have himself a game. but um, No, Jeff Teague. <laughs> it was yeah, all Teague last Teague. night. But Rose, I mean, good Lord, in that first half, man, it was 2008 all over again. But uh, yeah, I'll still go with the Blazers here. Um, it, it'll be still be a close game, and the Thunder won't it won't be abandoned ship. But uh, it's a tough one. Portland's a tough place to play. On Friday, 76ers at Rockets. That'll be a good one. Sixers, Rockets. I got Rockets. How many over and under? Over or under? Uh, James Harden, thirty five. Under. Under. The Sixers actually have players who can lock him up. That's why. Ryan. JJ Redick. Why would they put him? Why would they put J? This isn't two K where the shooting guards automatically match the shooting guards. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to put Jimmy Butler on James Harden, so or Ben Simmons, one of the two. So under thirty five. Ryan, um, I'd say over on this one. I'm going to go thirty seven. Oh, you crazy! You're crazy! <laughs> crazy! <laughs> nuggets at Warriors. Deontay, are you going to do some scouting with the Nuggets? Watching this game. Oh, wait, you don't have cable. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at work anyways. It won't matter. I'm going to go with the Warriors here. Yeah, Warriors. Nuggets. Oh, yeah. After what just happens to the Warriors, I'm not a believer but, in them right now. Nah. Nah. God, give me, it's give, like, give eh. me a break. It's, it's the Warriors league. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the NHL. Ryan, are you still standing pat with your caps against the Lightning? Yes. Why? <laughs> I, you, you ask me every week, and it doesn't change. No, I asked you. Nothing two, will I, change I asked until you the two playoffs ago, actually will start. I asked you two weeks ago, and do you, do you know what the standings are right now? Yeah, and the Caps are fighting for first in the Metro. And look at the Lightning in the Atlantic, mind you, against teams like the Bruins and the Maple Leafs. I don't, and they are ahead by seventeen I, points. They have a hundred and six points this season already. Okay, did they win it last year? No, but they okay. They weren't so what's this changed? Game. They weren't this thing last change. Yes, they were. We were talking about them no, in they December were, they last year were, about no, being a no. an automatic favorite. No, yes, we were. But Guaranteed. they weren't this good. We we still talked about them being a favorite, but they weren't this good. Yes, they were. And with the Stanley Cup being the hardest championship to win, you think that the Capitals could go back to back? Yeah, Pittsburgh sure sure did. Yeah, how often does that happen? That's rare. Yeah, but not every team has an Ovi, so. I don't know why you keep asking me the question. Until playoffs start, the my answer is going to stay the, the same. The Lightning are so damn good. That's why. 
The answer doesn't change. We should cue denial by Seven Dust, because that's what Ryan's in right now. Pure denial. It hasn't even started. Pure started. denial. It hasn't even they started. They just beat Winnipeg 5-2. to two If, uh, if the Ottawa Caps were down 3-0 in a series, yeah, I'd probably be a, a little biased, but no, I, I think it's still very much realistic. No. It's, it's <laughs> Deontay, what do you think? Um, you play you play NHL every now and again. Oh, well, I haven't bought nineteen yet. Probably too late. I can just wait till twenty. But it's the NHL playoffs. Anything can happen. But that, that's your intent. But there's some there's some times where if you know, you know. And the Lightning are like the 2013 Seahawks. You just know they're it. Yeah, this that's, is honest to God the best. I mean, I I'm not a as deep into hockey as I am with football and stuff like that. But this is the best hockey team I've seen. Okay. Last year was the best hockey team you'd seen. No, so. it wasn't. Uh, no, no, the, it night, wasn't. the Knights were cold, man. The Knights were cold. <laughs> 106 points. Next in the Atlantic is Boston Bruins with 89 points. Ooh. And you're fighting for number one in a division with the Islanders and the Hurricanes. <laughs> now, I, I like the Capitals. One of my favorite players plays for the Capitals with TJ Oshie. But you guys, you, you got to know when to just wave the white flag and admit, okay, we might lose this one. And then it's like with OU playing Bama last season. I was like, okay, you know what? If we win, great, but chances are we're going to lose this game. And, and and the chances are pretty big. Oh, they were big, all right. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan, um, it's okay to have hope. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's... there's. Oh, I'm not, I'm not worried. Last year, the Caps only had 83 points heading into the playoffs. They have 83 points right now. So, yeah, and the Lightning have so 106. So, back off, son. 51, 12, and 4. Yeah. So they With an 87 goal differential. Oh, wait. Plus no, 87. Wait no, wait. Oh, what the hell? Why did it go back? Their last 10 games are 9, 1, and 0. That's probably about their last 10 games for, like, the whole season. The last 10 games for the Capitals, 7 and 3. And, again, the Capitals are a great team. I'm not denying that. They're better than my Blues. But Still going <laughs> to the playoffs. Yeah, but with the Lightning, they're just they're unstoppable. Wait, hold on. I just I just don't want you to get hurt, Ryan. That's the thing. Like with the Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last year the Caps had 105 points heading to the playoffs. I was gonna say <laughs> it was. And the Lightning have how many right now? 106. Exactly. Okay. Talk s. Keep doing it. Nobody's doubting the cap. We're not. Nobody's doubting the ability. You clearly are. If you no, keep asking me no, we're not doubting the, We're not doubting the Capitals. We're touting the Lightning. We we knock Deontay down all the time for not being realistic. Now we're trying to do the same thing to you. I my answer doesn't oh, change. But my unrealistic stuff ended up being pretty realistic. <laughs> in the <laughs> if, if Tom Brady's in the playoffs, are you going to count him out? No, but oh, okay, he's not Tom Brady. Brady. What do you mean? Ovechkin's not this, Tom Brady. This is hockey, man. Yeah, he did it last year. No, this is like no. The, the, it's the same team. Was, no, this is like the, no, the, when it's was the, the last, same team. When was the last time the Patriots went back to back? Two thousand four ish. That's what I'm saying. Went back to back, back to back Super Bowl champions. Oh three, oh four, or oh four, oh five. One of those. Okay, games. but they. So you think three o, and five you think Ovechkin's going to be able to do the same thing that Sidney Crosby did? Go, go back to back in the toughest playoffs in sports with the Lightning. With the Bruins. Yes. With the Maple Leafs. I, I don't know how much clearer I need to be. God. Man, you crazy. Denial. Absolute denial. Oh, playoffs are uh, rolling next month, don't they? So Yeah. Well, yeah. So, we'll have to see. All right, we're going to stick in your division, Ryan. The Carolina Hurricanes bring joy to the hockey world with their victory celebrations. But how far will they go this season? Out first round. I said don't matter, lightning in five. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Like the celebrations, but let's relax a little bit. Enjoy the ride. But I'm just saying, if everyone was on the best team in the league in the NFL this year, the Saints would have probably won. Yeah, but the Saints... The Saints were not the, the best team in the league. The Saints in the NFL. Who was? Are you going to say Kansas City? Because they also didn't win. I'm not going to say they were the best team. Either way, no the Saints or the Chiefs Patriots in the NFL are. are nowhere close to how good the Lightning are in the NHL right now. I disagree. That is... It is borderline. The Lightning, or look at it, look at the standings. I don't even got to watch the games to know that they're just running away with this thing. Kucherov has 108 points already this year. How do you feel about that? I don't. 
What, what's it supposed to do? At what point do you think you're going to change my mind? I don't know. I'm just trying it's to not gonna throw happen. numbers at him. It's not going to happen. All right. Well, let's predict who will win each division. The Atlantic? The Lightning? <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Now, I'll give you this. I have the Capitals winning the Metro. Me yeah. too. You too. They ain't winning don't... the Stanley Cup, though. <laughs> <laughs> I... And again, yeah, I like it's the, easy to I say like that when it's March 6. It's easy to say that. No, it's easy to say that when the Lightning are playing. Uh, in, the, <laughs> <laughs> in the Central, I have the Predators. Did we all have the Capitals in the Metro? Yeah. Okay. In the Central, I have the Predators. I have the Jets. I mean, obviously, with the Blues, the, the Central is going to be the one I'm paying attention to the most. Um, but Nashville can just score. Winnipeg is, I mean, they're filthy on defense, but um, with Nashville, just a little bit more star power. So. I, think, I think Winnipeg catches them. I think they catch them. And the Pacific, I have the Sharks. I have the Flames. I have Winnipeg. No one asks, but. Well, Ryan. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> and then Calgary. All right. Well, fantastic. So, yeah, like we said, just a f- nice little pocket of sports right now. Is that no football? And, and, that kind of just... Well, there's the draft. Oh, that's true. There's, that's true. there's that. And there's pro the days draft. coming up. Yeah, there's the Spring draft. Football, there's, I guess. there's the NBA playoffs. There's March Madness. There's the NHL playoffs. Baseball starting. And then summertime. And then summertime. Summertime. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that'll be it for this edition of the Penalty Box Sports Show. Uh, for Boomer... Or, I'm Boomer Sabata. And for the dudes, sorry, it's, my caffeine's starting to wear off. For the dudes, Deontay Horn and Ryan Sabata, I am Boomer Sabata saying, drive safely, trust the gut, and happy Ash Wednesday. <laughs>